Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Adam here with Retro Repairs, and today I got another package in the mail from our favorite video game country, Japan. I'm um, gonna crack it open and show you what I got. So, this is kind of interesting. It's not something you typically see very often, and it's nothing I've ever seen before, but I found it online and I couldn't really pass it up. Alright, so, we're mostly in, and as you can see, it's red. Just a big, giant, red game system. Let's uh, crack open the rest of this. So I must uh, give them some props. They did a pretty good job of bundling this all up. Um, I wasn't really sure to expect what to expect from this, but it came in good shape. <clears throat> and we have a Sharp Twin Famicom AN500R, and that R stands for red, as, as you can see. Um, this guy, what it is, basically, is a Famicom console. You put your Famicom cartridges in here, and it also plays disk system games. So you can get the best of both worlds, your Famicom disk system and your classic Famicom games as well. Now, for those of you not familiar with what the Famicom is, it's uh, what the NES was in Japan. So they released the Famicom in the early 80s. And in North America here, we got the Nintendo Entertainment System, which was quite different looking. In Japan, they released the Famicom Disk System as an add-on for their Famicom. And they had something similar planned for us here in North America. However, those plans were scrapped um, due to a couple reasons, mainly the... Super Nintendo coming out soon, and the fact that these discs were incredibly easy to pirate. Um, so, at the end of the day, they weren't making very much money off of it. But, um, you can still find discs out there. They're definitely not very common, but um, if you can find them, and if they work, it makes a great console add-on. Games such as Super Mario 2, the original Super Mario Brothers 2 that they got in Japan, was released on the disc system. Legend of Zelda was released on the disc system. Um, so, if all goes well, ideally I'm going to have a working disc system and a working Famicom. So, we're going to have to uh, get this hooked up, give it a test, and see what works and what doesn't. So, the first thing we need to do in order to test this, um, it came with no power and no AV cables, which isn't a huge deal. On the back, it uses... Um, composite uh, for video and mono audio out um, and then we need to figure out the power situation so if we flip this over so that you can read it we need DC 7.5 volts in um, furthermore you look at the little diagram at the top and that's telling us it's center tip positive and that's important to look at is if you get the wrong polarity on your adapter you could definitely wind up damaging the system which I don't want to do I just picked this up so we need to find a firstly a tip that will fit and secondly we need to find a tip that has the right voltage and the right polarity so I found a tip that fits I'm pretty sure this uses the same type of tip as a Nintendo entertainment system however those adapters aren't acceptable reason for that is they actually output AC power and this requires DC so it'll fry it. This guy are Sega adapters they'll also fit for the original Sega Genesis however they're center tip negative so again that's not going to work. What I need to do now 
find something that's seven and a half volts center tip positive, but uses an end like that. And that's not really the easiest to come across. You can buy your own um, customizable ones, so you can set the voltage and you set the polarity, or you can find something that you might have laying around. So I've got a Sony PS1 AC adapter. Um, it will output 7.5 volts at center tip positive, which is exactly what we need. Problem is the tip doesn't fit. This is the tip that comes with it, and this is the tip that I need. They're just a little bit wrong. So um, to fix that, I can do one of two things. I can find a new one, or I could put this tip on this adapter, which is what I'm gonna do here. All right, so in order to successfully change the tips on this cord, you're gonna need a couple of things. You're gonna need some cutters. You're gonna need some wire strippers. You're gonna need either some uh, heat shrink tubing or some electrical tape. Either will work. Um, heat shrink tubing's the ideal way to go. However, um, I don't have any left right now, so I'm gonna have to use electrical tape. And you're gonna use your soldering iron. So first thing is you want to get a soldering tip that's big enough to hold a good amount of thermal mass. So I'm going to use a chisel tip for this instead of the fine point. And the chisel tip, it looks kind of like this. It's still pretty fine, but it has a little bit of a flatter edge and it's going to be better for heating up wires. Um, and what we're going to do is actually solder these wires together. So. Put that in its stand and get the soldering iron turned on and heat it up. Now, what I'm going to do, we're going to simply cut this. So cut it about halfway, actually maybe a little higher up in this case. And we can put that off to the side. So what I need to do first is we're going to strip the shielding off this, or the uh, plastic sheathing. We want to get down to, um, there's two layers here. There's the shielding outside of it, which is basically stranded wire. And then there's some insulation. And then underneath here is some more stranded wire. We just need to make absolute positive which is which. Normally it should be the middle is going to correlate to the tip and the outside is going to correlate to the uh, the sleeve, but you always want to double check it just in case. So to do so, I'm just going to use my multimeter, touch the outside sleeve, touch this uh, shielding. And that beep you hear means continuity, so negative to negative. We want to match that up with, on this side, we want to match it up with the tip on this adapter. So, grab my tip. I'm going to leave myself a good amount of extra space so let's say about five or six inches there and we're gonna cut this gonna cut it down the center as well and then strip some of the sheathing off now we're gonna do the same thing the purpose of this is I want to make sure which is going to be the center and which is going to be the outside. So, grabbing my multimeter, I hold one of the contacts on the sleeve on the outside, one of the contacts on this wire, and that gives me nothing. If I hold it against this other wire, I should get a beep. And you hear that beep, so that means that the outside is on this wire right here that I have not yet uh, stripped. So we just have to keep that in mind on how we're going to connect these together. And in case you're wondering, that sound you hear in the background is my dog gnawing on a bone. She's uh, kind of interested in the sharp Famicom. She's never seen one before. All right, so continuing this, we're going to strip the other sh outer sheathing or the outer uh, shielding. We're going to remove this shielding off to the side here. So this is the negative part, and this will be on the outside. We're going to strip the inside. And when you're doing this, it's always better to start with a higher than necessary um, size stripper, and you can always 
move down as necessary. You don't want to start cutting these wires prematurely, especially since we have limited space here. So um, just a reminder, positive is here, negative is here. So now what we're going to do, um, we have to solder these together. So we separate the two. As we mentioned earlier, um, just again, I want to double check because I don't want to solder the wrong sides together. We need negative on the outside. So touching these to the outside. So this exposed side is positive. So I'm going to solder it to the positive side. So to do that, what you're going to want to do is you hold these wires. I'm going to zoom in a bit for you. You basically twist the wires together. You want it to have a little bit of a mechanical bond. Fortunately, we're... I'm going to give myself a little more wire here to work with. There we go. All right, and we want to make sure that none of this is going to be coming in contact with the uh, negative side. So positive to positive. Spin it around and again, ensure that everything's straight. There we go. It's not liking focusing on something so small. All right. So now what you're going to do is find something to let it rest on. Once these wires are twisted together and staying put, you grab your soldering iron. Actually, you grab your flux. It's nice to put a little bit of flux on this too. Helps the solder to, helps to clean the contacts and helps the solder to grip it nicely. And of course, it falls apart when I put the flux on. All right, you grab your solder and you grab your iron. So all you're gonna do, contact the wire a little bit. The point is you wanna heat this up nicely. Then you melt some solder into it. The solder is going to help bond the two wires together. It's definitely not the cleanest uh, wire I've done, but I also haven't done a lot of wire soldering like this. Okay, so set that aside, let that bond for a second, give it a little tug, and that's being held together nicely now. So we will let it cool a little bit more and then tape over top of this. So again, heat shrink tubing is the ideal way to go, but in the absence of it, you absolutely can use electrical tape as a, in a pinch. So we're going over top of it, try and get it nice and tight. There we go. Now we're going to do the exact same process, except with the other end. So we're going to strip this end, solder it to this side, tape it, and then we're going to tape all the way back a bit to give it some more strength. So strip the wire here. Twist them together.
It's a little trickier this time around because I've already got these. Sometimes I like to just mesh it together and then pinch it like that. That can work too. There we go. Now again, same thing. We're going to heat it up. I didn't put any flux on there. So give it a pinch together so that it's as compact as possible. Heat it up and apply your solder. All right, that should be good. You don't want to hold your soldering iron on it for too long. Um, doing so, you run the risk of melting the sheathing or other components. So let's tape that over that. And then we're gonna tape over this entire joint right now. So I forgot to give it a little pull test, but it's definitely holding nice. So now from probably about this strain relief point, I'm going to just roll the tape over it nice and tightly. There we go. So that wire's been now spliced. Um, like I said before, heat shrink tubing's your best option. Just a lot neater, looks better, but in a pinch, you can use electrical tape. Uh, one day down the road, I might go back and uh, run over that. So now that we have our 7.5 volt center positive AC adapter ready to go, it's time to test out the Sharp, Super, or Sharp Twin Famicom. All right, so I have it connected to my TV. And currently, I only actually have one game that I can test with it, and that is what appears to be Mario Golf for the Famicom Disk System. Um, I'm going to show you what these discs look like quickly. So you may have seen a normal Famicom game before, but uh, this is a Famicom Disk System game. They're basically proprietary floppy disks. They use an old format that really didn't become mainstream. Um, so they use these instead of cartridges or instead of CDs at the time. Um, you'll note it has Nintendo written at the bottom, and this was actually a uh, form of copy protection. So when you put the game in, there are a couple things that clamp down on the I and the N, and that makes sure that you're using a genuine uh, disc. Now, having said that, um, people who are manufacturing reproductions probably have no idea, ma no, uh, no problem manufacturing reproductions with those... Uh, those holes there so it wasn't really a very good system as evident by the fact that this uh, disc system really didn't last very long but um, I'm gonna turn this on and we'll see what we've got so powers on I uh, got no output though it's giving me a pretty odd uh, sound Try uh, kind of playing with these cords a bit. I just want to make sure that my TV is set up on the proper input. There you go, I had my cords mixed up. So, this is what I've got Famicom now loading. Um, so, I'm going to try to turn this off. We're going to change this uh, input. This will switch between the uh, cartridge and the disk system. So, I think this is in cartridge mode when it's down. Yeah, it gives me a gray screen because there's no cartridge. We'll flip it up and turn it on. Now loading. So we are in disc mode. I'm going to try just put in a disc, see what we get here.
but so far nothing. It's not uncommon at all that uh, on these Famicom disk systems that uh, the drive belts fail. Um, so that's most likely going to be a repair that I'm going to have to do is replace the drive belt. Um, they are a special proprietary format, so if it is broken, um, that could definitely be a reason why. I'll just try to hit the restart button. Oh, please set disk, now loading. So it definitely thinks there's a disk in there, but it's not reading anything. So we're going to have to take apart this drive to uh, attempt to fix it. Um, and I'm going to have to get a hold of a Famicom cartridge so that I can test this slot as well. So, looks like I'm probably going to have a multi-part series on my hands here. Um, so, I'm going to make this just a quick uh, part one right now, showing you how I got the power cord going, and uh, just a basic turning on and troubleshooting, and then part two, we're going to take a look at this uh, disk system and try and repair it. So, thanks a lot for watching this one. Um, be sure to stay tuned for part two. I'm hoping to get that done fairly soon. We can get that disc system torn apart, try and figure out what the problem is, replace the belt on it, and hopefully it will even work. So thanks a lot for watching. Um, be sure to leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. And uh, like my or subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You'll be among the first to know when I release new stuff or get new stuff to show you. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.